Which is better, buying or selling options? I'm going to show why I prefer selling options, but I'm also going to share with you how I go about buying options when I decide it's in my best interest. This will help you decide which one you should be doing, buying or selling options. If you decide to buy options, you're gonna see the proper way to do it. For the sake of this video, I'm going to show you how you can use options to profit if the SP 500 were to go down over the next several weeks. Now, there's three ways to do that. You can buy a put option, you can sell some call options, or you can do a combination of the two. So let's talk through the strengths and weaknesses of each one of those strategies so you can decide which one is best for you. The first scenario is we could just simply buy a put option. The advantages of that are that if the stock were to go down in price by a certain amount, we could receive benefit from that. Now, the benefits of buying a put option is that it caps our risk. It's capped at how much we pay for that put option. And if the stock moves enough in our favor, we could potentially get a nice win. Now keep in mind as we talk through this scenario that right now the S&P 500 or Spider is trading for right around $495 per share. So what are the advantages and disadvantages of buying a put option if we think a stock is going to go down? Well, first of all, the advantage is that we've limited our risk. In this situation, we're looking at buying the June 21st 480 put option. The option will cost us just under $7 per share, around $6.95 per share. So you multiply that times the 100 shares, we have around $695 at risk. What happens if SPY goes down? Here you see the profit and loss chart for our put option if the SP 500 were to go down. Notice the overall, we're at a net loss all the way up to the point where it crosses this line here. So the stock will have to get down to right around $475 per share just for us to break even. And remember, it's currently trading for right at $495 per share. So it has to come down quite a bit just for us to get back to break even. In fact, here you see I've laid out the chart for you. It's trading for around $495 per share. The put option we bought is $480 per share. It has to get all the way down here to right at $473 per share before the put option we bought is at a break even. Now, if it gets below that, then we're definitely at a profit. And it's quite possible it moves down fast enough so we can sell that put option back earlier than before expiration and benefit from the decrease in price. But overall, you see what you're up against. You're paying for something. You need the stock to come down pretty fast fast in order to benefit from that stock's decline. But if SPY to continue going down in price, see the value of this put option you bought could go way up in value. For example, you see here that if it went down about $400 per share, we'd be looking at a profit of about $7,000. And here on the bottom, you see a chart of those possible what if scenarios. And this what if scenario is run based on today. So, we're not looking at expiration, but let's look at the profit and loss of this put option. If, say, for example, SPY were to drop by 10%, 20%, or 30%, he should, if it experienced a 10% drop today, the value of this position would be around $2,800. So, a very nice profit if you were to experience a 10% drop today in SPY over the next coming days. If it dropped 20%, we're looking at a potential profit of around $7,700. And again, we only risk just under $7 per share. So that's what option buyers like. They have the potential to have a little bit at risk with a potential large reward. However, keep in mind, they need things to happen pretty quick. They need those moves to be pretty substantial in order to receive the benefits. You see, one thing you have working against you is this very bottom line on this chart, theta. Theta is time decay. That's approximately how much value the option that you bought is going to lose each day. If it stays around its current price, you see in this column, it will lose about eight cents per share per day. So if you buy an option, you definitely want to move in your favor really fast. Otherwise, if it does go in your favor, you still might lose money. So that's buying an option. That's why I don't particularly like to buy options very often. However, there is a way I do buy options. And I'll show you at the very end, because if you're going to buy them, you want to consider using my technique. The second way you can use options to benefit if you thought SPY is going to go down in price is to sell options. Let's look at that scenario. And keep in mind that SPY is trading for around $495 per share. So how could we use selling options to potentially benefit if it were to continue coming down in price? Well, we could look to sell a call option that expires in about 61 days. This will be known as selling a naked call option. And they can, selling naked call options can be very dangerous. So please watch this entire section because I'm going to tell you how to protect yourself in case it were to go against you. We can look to sell the June 21st $500 call option. That option is about $5 out of the money. It's trading for around $495 per share. And we're selling the $500 call option. For selling that call option, we actually get paid pretty good premium. They're selling for around $12.60 per share. However, look at Delta. The odds of this option being in the money expiration is right at 50%. So basically your odds are the flip of a coin. I don't particularly like that. I'm not gambling. I'm looking to generate consistent returns and cash flow. But let's just say you were okay with this. How could you protect yourself if you wanted to sell a call option? Because remember, we like selling options as compared to buying them. So how can we sell an option and still give ourselves some protection? Well, instead of just selling that $500 call option, we could buy ourselves some protection. Here you see we might consider buying ourselves the $510 call option. So we've sold the June 21st. $500 call option, we've bought the June 21st $510 call option. 
And for that, as you see here in max return, we expect to pocket just under $500 total or $487 for this position. So what do we have at risk here? Well, here you see the profit and loss chart. And I know this can look confusing if you haven't seen these very often. So let me talk you through it. Down here is the price of SPY. So if we sold a call option, we want SPY to be below the strike price of the call option we sold. Remember, we sold the $500 call option. So here we have the price of SPY. If it's below this $500 per share expiration, you follow this line up, we'll receive a profit of $500. Now the dotted line here is the approximate value of the option spread that we sold based on today's price. As expiration nears, this dotted line will become to look more and more like the solid white line if SPY were at the same price it's at right now. But overall, if we fast forward to expiration, as long as SPY is below $500 per share as you see down here, then our profit is that money we received up front, which is $487. I like this a lot better than just selling a naked call option. At least we've capped our potential loss. By the way, what is that potential loss? Well, it's about $500. We received about $500 when we entered this position. We bought the $510 call option for protection, so we have $10 per share at risk. Multiply that times the 100 shares that this spread represents, we're looking at a $1,000 potential loss. But remember, we're getting almost $500 up front, so we're really only risking $500. I like doing this spread better than buying that put option because at least theta or time decays in our favor. Notice at the very bottom of the row labeled theta. Notice that if the stock were to remain at its current price and go down 10%, theta or time decay works in our favor. So I like that theta has the potential to work for us and not against us. However, you do want to be very careful when it comes to selling call options. Overall, right now, on a longer time frame, we're in a very strong bull market in the S&P 500. Now, I believe it's currently overvalued, although the recent decline has helped some of the values, but I still believe the S&P 500 is currently overvalued or too expensive. But obviously, the market is disagreeing with me for now. So keep in mind, if you sell call options in a very strong bull market, that can put you in a very dangerous position. So please understand the risk you're taking before you sell any option, and especially a naked call option, or even a bearish call credit spread like I just demonstrated for you. So I told you I don't particularly like just buying a put option, but I'll say you wanna be very careful if you're selling a naked call option or a bearish call credit spread. So what might be the happy medium? When would I feel comfortable actually buying an option? Well, if I wanted to buy an option instead of selling it in a stock like SPY that I thought was going down, here's how I do it. I will consider buying a longer term put option. So here you see an example of that. If I just wanted to buy an option, I wanted to limit my potential loss, I didn't feel comfortable selling options or selling a call option or a bearish call credit spread, I could look to buy a put option. Here you see the option chain that expires in about 607 days. This is what's known as a leaps option because it expires in over a year from now. If we go to the $500 strike price put option, see it's selling for around $34.08 per share to $35.51 per share. We expect it to cost us just under $35 per share. But what I like about this is that time decay is not that bad. Here you see in the bottom right corner, in this far right column labeled theta, we expect the value of that $500 put option that we are buying to lose just over one cent per share per day. Now that's not that bad. Again, I like theta working in my favor, not against me. And I'll show you how I can do that even when I buy a put option here like this in just a minute. But that's not bad theta. It's only 1.2 cents per share per day. So what might this profit and loss look like? Well, here's the performance chart of the put option I just shared with you. Remember the solid white line is what will happen at expiration if we still own this option based on the price of SPY, which is represented down here at the bottom. But this dotted line is the value of this option today if SPY were to be at any one of these strike prices. So for example, let's just say it were to drop from the $495 per share trading at now to $425. Well, if we go up the $400 line here, we see we expect the value of this option to be right at $4,000. So we have about a $4,000 profit on this put option. That sounds pretty awesome. But it does have to drop all the way to $425. So that's a substantial drop. That's a $70 per share drop. But remember, we're risking only right at $35 per share or $3,500. So we basically double our money. I like that, that sounds pretty good. If we were to drop, say 30%, notice down here in the bottom left corner, the value of this position of this put option we bought for $3,500, it'd be worth almost $12,000. It'd be worth $11,789. And those numbers are just approximate. But it gives you an idea of your potential reward if you bought this put option. But again, you have time decay working against you, and I don't like that. So how can we switch this so we have time decay working in our favor and we're still limiting our potential loss by buying 
buying a put option. We can still buy that same option that expires in about 600 days, the December 19th to 25 $500 put option, but we can sell a nearer term put option against it. For example, we can sell the option that expires in 61 days on June 21st. We can sell the $470 put option. So that's pretty far of the money. SPY is at $495. What's on the $470 put option? So this put option wouldn't be challenged unless SPY dropped by about $25 per share. How much could we get for selling that put option? Notice in the bottom right corner, this pink and red area here, we get about $5 per share. So remember that $500 put option costs us around $35 per share. We're getting $5 per share for selling the 470 put option that expires in 61 days. But notice what theta or time decay is over on the far right side. Notice it's at 0.076. That more than outpaces the 1.2 cents per share that we'd lose on the put option that we bought if everything else stays the same. The problem though is that we're giving away some potential profit. For example, if SPY were to go below 470 per share before that option expires we sold in 61 days, then we're giving up some of our profit. So what does that look like? Where here you see a little bit of a wild looking PL. Let me talk you through it here. Because now you have two options working with this one position. Remember, we bought the December option, that expires in over 600 days, but we sold the near term option at the 470 strike price, that expires in about 60 days. So we're going to realize some nice profit if SPY is right at that 470 per share in 61 days. And that's what the solid white line is. However, the dotted line is what we expect the PL to be of this combined position as of today if SPY were at any one of these prices down here. So if it were to drop immediately, say tomorrow to 475 per share, we expect this PL to be around $250. Now, that's not great, but it's also not bad. We have theta working in our favor. We're also limiting how much we have at risk because we bought a put option as compared to selling that naked call option. If you're looking to buy and sell options, you want to really look into what's known as the Greeks. And theta is one of those Greeks. Theta is how much the value of an option is going to lose over time if everything else stays the same. I don't mind buying options. But when I do, I still want to somehow put theta in my favor. One way we could do it here is by selling a near term option against the one that we bought. So which do you prefer? Do you prefer to buy options or sell options? Let me know down in the comments section below. Because theta or time decay is working against the option buyer, I typically prefer to sell options. That way I have theta working for me, not against me. I've just found it can be a consistent, safe way to generate monthly cash flow and returns. On the occasion when I do buy an option, I always sell an option against it to keep that theta going in my favor. If you'd like to get an alert whenever we buy stock or sell options, check out the benefits of becoming a patron down at the link in the description below. As I mentioned, selling options is one of my favorite ways to generate consistent monthly cash flow. If you'd like to see how we sell put options to generate consistent monthly cash flow using some of my real life trades, Check out the video series at the link above in the description below entitled Selling Put Options Explained with Real Life Examples. Until next time, happy investing and we'll see you again soon.